Okay, we are going live with another edition of Bid Nerds, also known as Bid Nerd. We're actually trying to figure that out. Uh, but you can find us on hashtag Bid Nerd um, on the Instagrams and the Facebooks. We definitely have that uh, as far as a www website like the old kids use. Uh, I don't know. It's probably Bid Nerds. Uh, so anyways, we'll get that uh, sorted out in the thing down below. But we like to call ourselves the Bid Nerds. My name is John Polnick, and I am introducing my partner, Michael hey. Deeb. How you doing, buddy? Very good. Thank you for having me. Looking good with that uh, good wolf hat. That's from uh, Las Vegas. Yeah. So yeah, uh, what Bid Nerds is, Bid Nerd is a website, is a YouTube channel where you can come and listen to a couple guys that don't really know anything uh, about their thoughts and opinions about the popular and best, most popular cars, our picks of the day on car auction sites like Cars and Bids and uh, bring a trailer and maybe sometimes uh, P car market and uh, whatever else might pop up. There's some new ones coming out, right, Michael? Yes, there are. There's a bunch coming to market. We're gonna be flooded pretty soon. Look out for Stratus, look out for Radwood and possibly even Petrolicious, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Now, uh, you know, I have sold a car on Cars and Bids. Uh, I've never sold one on Bring a Trailer. In fact, uh, Bring a Trailer has Bring a Trailer denied my 1988 Chrysler LeBaron, um, which I think was uh, to their, I mean, that was just a dumb move on their part because- it Blasphemy. Was, right? I mean, it was an awesome auction on Cars and Bids. So full disclosure, I am a fan of Cars and Bids and I do have a car coming out uh, probably next week on Cars and Bids, uh, my personal Cayenne. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that stuff a little later. Uh, today we're gonna get to the cars. Uh, we're gonna just talk about, we're gonna do our three top picks for um, Thursday, September. What's tomorrow's date? Anybody know? I don't know, October Yeah, I, th I suppose we should probably do some prep before we do this show, but who cares? Well, what are these if you're watching this, whatever. Uh, the first car I think we were gonna talk about was a car you mentioned, uh, Mike, this, uh, this has, uh, this has, this is a car that's, I don't know, near and dear to your heart. A, uh, a what what year is this? this? Is a nineteen? Uh, what year? Tell me about this car, Michael, because I don't know. The the nineteen ninety three Mazda Miata, and this is the uh, limited edition they did that year. Uh, Mazda had successfully done, I think, the first limited edition they did was British Racing Green with a Nardi wood wheel and a Nardi um, shift knob. This limited edition they did a couple of years later with the uh, with the special black paint and the red leather interior and the BBS wheels. And these are, you know, these are lookers. Um, there was nothing performance driven by this model. It was just the cosmetics, um, but that was kind of enough to help move units off the showroom floor and continue to create buzz and keep the car in everyone's conscience. I had the opportunity, I was offered to sell one for a colleague and uh, I took one look at the car and decided, and if you're familiar with San Francisco, you'll appreciate this. Um, I took the car down to the Castro, um, Castro and 16th, or 18th, I think. I parked it right in front of a bar on a Saturday afternoon with the top down and um, had a girlfriend take me home. And I didn't have to wait by the phone, but more than an hour, the phone rang, somebody called, I went right back down there and sold the car on the sidewalk, um, literally in 90 minutes, it was amazing. Yeah. Um, so these are these are really cool cars and they have a lot of curb appeal. So I'm looking, we're, we're, the screen right now, you can see uh, the interior shot. There's like a kind of aluminum or some kind of uh, maybe brushed aluminum or whatever uh, stereo speaker surround. Is that a factory thing or is that I don't think something so. somebody no. added? Yeah. I think that's somebody's hack job. You know? Okay. Okay. It's yeah, hard to imagine, JP, these cars are 27 years old. Isn't yeah, that incredible? It's amazing. So, well, and this one only has 89,000 miles, but it definitely looks its age. So low miles for yeah. the year, certainly. That steering yeah. wheel is wrecked. Um, yeah, so it's a shift knob. The, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't, I mean, you know, now that I'm looking at it, the, the, those kick plates that are around the speakers mm -hmm. seem to match the kick plates that are on the thing. So it's either an aftermarket package that somebody bought for the car, or it did come with that, and I just don't remember. But uh, yeah. I don't know. I wouldn't guess that's factory, but maybe it's speakers is. in the seats. Is that a thing? That's a thing. Right? That was that was a new thing. Yeah. At that era, at that time um, that you could have the speakers right in your ears, which you know, doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But um, I think Honda did it with the S2000 as well. 
Now the only Miata I've ever owned, I, I I can't remember what year it was. It was it was pro it was in the late '90s. I bought a car, uh, I bought a Miata to flip, um, and I will say that that car uh, that car was a manual transmission, obviously like this one. They did yeah. make them with automatic, so that wasn't uncommon. Um, so, but it wasn't the, most of these went out the door as sticks, though I think. Right, but the thing that was interesting about that car it was I, I don't know what color it was specifically called, but it was kind of it looked like a kind of a Porsche, um, kind of a Mexico blue or Riviera blue, something like that. Oh right, Luke yeah, Luceca yeah. blue. So it was a, you know a cute little fun race car, um, but it was also a uh, it had manual steering. It did not have power steering, where I know most of these do have power steering. That's one of the things that people like about them, is the steering is very light. They were very popular back in the early 90s because, you know, prior to this car, I remember if you wanted a little two-seater convertible, you were stuck with like an MG uh, or an old Austin Healey or something sure. like that. And those or things an were or, or an Alpha. And, you know, all those cars were pieces of junk. They broke all the time. Uh, they were, they certainly had all the, you know, all the style. Uh, but to actually get in one and drive one regularly just wasn't a thing. Even the, yeah. the heat never worked in those darn things. They leaked all the time. And the right. Miata was like the first like true roadster sports car that anybody could own. Uh, and it turns out they just happened to be a super fun car to drive. And that's why people love them as race cars and daily drivers. And you can do almost anything with them. But no power yeah. steering really made that car like the perfect track car. Yeah, these cars were cool, and I want to say that those, those first generation cars, um, power steering wasn't even an option, if I remember correctly. These cars were very, very light, and so what what the engineers and the bean counters at Mazda realized is that they could bring Japanese reliability that was being ushered in by, um, you know, Nissan, Datsun, Toyota, and Honda. Um, so, the, so the American faith in the reliability of a Japanese car was what they were exposing in the marketplace with this car that clearly echoed old English and old Italian sports cars, uh, front engine, manual transmission, rear wheel drive, independent suspension, and a car that you could, you know, reach across and open the passenger door because they were so small. These cars weighed barely two pounds, if I remember. And uh, so you just, you didn't need power steering. Um, I think it came in later generations as perhaps an option, but initially, um, yeah, they they felt live in your hands because there was nothing between you and the tires. It was just all mechanical, and uh, and they sold a boatload of them. I mean, I'm, if I recall, many decades ago they sold their millionth Miata. Wow. So I mean, you know, it's hard to that's they, pretty they amazing. Might be, they might be approaching two million Miatas, which would make it bar none one of the greatest selling cars, automobiles of all time. You know, and the parts are super inexpensive. Uh, this one has a hard top. Does that look like it's a factory hard top to you? I'm it sure is a factory. Read the ad, it would it is a factory hard top. And now what I'm trying to think is if the hard top was an option or it came standard on the special edition because the car I sold also had the hard top. So uh, I don't know. That's that's an interesting thing. Yeah. Do you I'm know what LE means? This is a Mazda, uh, Mazda MX-5 limited, LE. That's just limited edition. I just don't know what they called this edition. The first one was the British Racing Green. Then they did a Montego Blue. They did one that was a really pretty, uh, like a mica Merlot kind of metallic color with tan seats. That one did really well. Um, and one of those just sold uh, for fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars $16,000 on Bring a Trailer that had reasonably low miles and looked like it was in very nice condition, um, certainly cleaner than this car. Um, so this is interesting. You know, this black one with the red, uh, just kind of continued that idea that they would make one in limited quantities yeah. uh, to create buzz and and it, it worked they sold them and this one uh now this one it's in florida um or at least it's titled in florida um yeah. you know how do you feel so i look i like we're gonna I, i'm gonna basically kind of destroy our audience from anyone uh in florida because i would almost always avoid a car coming from florida generally and i would i would agree with you uh yeah. the the weather down there is harsh and the people of florida down there are harsh so you know if this car is not uh in climate controlled garage in you know in south beach then you know what you know or boca or something why would you uh you know the, well yeah i mean i think it's the, tampa's the, the, coming the, up but you know what's up Tampa's on the up and up, but still. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, for me. The thing about uh, the thing about Florida too is that you know you have obviously everybody knows the heat is a big thing. 
Um, but that heat combined with the moisture and be combined Oof. with the sea moisture, you know, you mm. wind up having a lot of wetness inside these cars, uh, and then you get mildew and must, and then of course rust uh, from the corrosion, and it's just, it, it's just. Boy, a car that uh, is only a few years old can look like it's decades old. Whereas where we're from, the desert southwest and you know Las yeah. Vegas, uh, the weather here is so dry that a car, an old car, um, can be preserved. I mean, I grew up in the northwest where yes, it rains all the time, um, but uh, but we didn't have any. There was no salt in the water, right? And there was very right. little heat. Uh, and when it did snow, if it ever snowed, they never put salt down on the road, so you didn't have that corrosion right. from the salt. East Coast cars in general really get their butts kicked. Um, so yeah. whenever you're considering a car from anywhere on the East Coast, not just Florida, you really have to make sure that you have uh, a lot of information if you're going to be buying it from an auction. Uh, make sure that you know because that rust can be everywhere. We're not saying that this particular car is a rusty car or not. Um, but that is something that you have to be extra, extra careful for. I remember my cousins uh, would come from the East Coast to visit, and they'd just marvel at all the old cars uh, mm -hmm. being on the West Coast. They're like, what? How do you have a, you know, how are there 60s cars? How are there 70s cars driving around? It's like, well, yeah, they don't yeah. rust away. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that, that's true all the way up California, all the way to the border uh, in Seattle and Washington up there. Um, we have great cars out here, great roads. And the uh, weather doesn't age the cars too quickly. Right. Well, okay. So this car is coming up for auction in 21 hours at some time tomorrow morning. Um, yeah. Sometime Thursday morning. Right now it has eight bids. Um, and the high bid currently is $6,700. Michael D., what's your bid on this? Uh, $8,900. $8,900. Do you think this is going to yeah. top out at about $8,900? Yeah. It's a, okay. it's all, we, we should add this is a no reserve. So if you're interested, this car is just sitting there for the taking. This car um, is a no reserve car? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I'm frankly shocked it's as high as it is already. Um, if it weren't a Florida car, maybe uh, I'd be looking at this one a little bit more closely. Um, but uh, I mean, yeah, uh, I'm going to bid... I'm gonna. I'm, my bid is seventy five hundred dollars. I know that's pretty darn close to yours. So I'm just about a thousand dollars lower than you. Um, mm -hmm. But again, I'm surprised it's even at sixty seven hundred dollars. If this car were local, I would think it's a five thousand dollar car, four thousand dollar car. Um, yeah. Maybe the limited edition thing really does mean something. Sorry, I'm not a Miata guy. So, uh, but I, I appreciate Miatas. I'm not knocking Miatas. I actually think they're fantastic cars and they're a great way to get into like a first enthusiast car or a race car that you don't have to worry about so um even though i'm not super strong on this car from a value point of view uh i think it'd be a terrific car to own and uh anybody who gets it is just gonna have a blast with it for sure all right so uh any last words on that car before we move on to the next one <laughs> no <laughs> all right uh let's see here so the next car is a car that uh, well, I think I do know these cars pretty darn well. This is this is something that uh, is kind of up my wheelhouse. Um, Michael Deeb, we are talking about a 2005 Porsche 911 Coupe. This is a six-speed with only 20,000 miles on it. That's an incredibly low amount of miles. Um, this is Just broken what in. would be uh, right considered a launch edition car. It's the first year of the 997. Uh, the 997 is one of those cars uh, that was kind of like, you know, Porsche was... Boy, people did not like the 996s, the previous generation of 911, um, when this car was out. So when the 997 came out, people were just so happy uh, for Porsche to kind of return to the curves of the 993 in the earlier cars. Right, right. And to put too fine a point on it, they just people were losing their mind over the headlights. That was it. Yeah. That was that was like I think if Porsche had left everything else alone and just changed the headlights and said this was a new model. That might have been enough for the populace, but the fact is this rode on a brand new platform and it, it's just, in 997s, you and I are both partial to that car. It, it, they're wonderful driving cars. Even this sort of basic uh, standard. Correct, yeah, and this really is the most basic, most standard version of the 997 that you could possibly get. Um, it is uh, it is not an S, so this car came with a 3.6 liter engine, which had a few more horsepower from the previous generation uh, 996. Now there was there was no 996 S 
two. So there was a there was a C four S in the nine nine six, which was a wide body car, um, but the engine was the same size as the standard. So unlike it, earlier versions of, of some nine elevens and future versions of nine elevens, like in the in the S's of a nine nine seven. Uh, an S will have a 3.8 liter, whereas the uh, standard non-S Carrera will have a 3.6. And again, it's a carryover from the 996 engine. Uh, it's 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 called the M96 engine. It's a uh, it's a fantastic. I mean, driving this car is such a fun car to drive. Uh, but they are known for a couple of specific Achilles heel. The infamous IMS, the intermediate shaft bearing, uh, is a problem with these cars. Uh, also, the they, they are prone to some cylinder cylinder scoring. Both of these problems sure. can be uh, can absolutely grenade the engine of this car. Cat uh, could be catastrophic. Catastrophic, absolutely. So you know, with that, it's like, boy, you know, at, at this, okay. Let's back up a little bit here. Let's talk about how this car is equipped. It's got the Lobster Claw 19 inch wheels, which are fantastic cool. wheels. That was so. If it that's usually something that comes on the S's, not the standard. So that was kind of an upgrade. This one has Wait, sports. Let, let me ask you. Let me ask you about those wheels. How mm -hmm. do you feel they've aged? Because now we're looking at a car that's 15 years old, and and that is still in my opinion, not only distinctive wheel for anything on the market, but it's a distinctive wheel even by Porsche standards. Yeah. And and I think, I mean, what do you think? Do you think that wheel, what, has time been kind to the design of that wheel? Because it's very I believe it has. I think I'm partial. I've always liked that wheel. Um, I think a lot of people remember this car. Uh, people look at the 997 so fondly because it was such an, an amazing improvement over the 996, or at least right. that's what it's, that's the general consensus. And when Agreed. this car was launched, it was launched with a very successful ad campaign, uh, with a with a TV commercial that's iconic, where uh, a young boy sees the car drive by uh, oh, in yeah. the window of his classroom, and he goes down to the dealership on his bicycle, and he, he tells the salesperson, I'll see you in 20 years. Um, yeah. You know, this is, a, this was a return to the iconic 911, where the 996, a lot of people believe, was kind of just it strayed too far from the classic look. Even though this car is completely modern and totally different from the old ones, it really does have that design language that carries over. Um, and I don't think that the 996 was really that big a departure. Uh, I agree with you that people get a little over, they get overdone on the on the lights. There are some interior issues that we can have a conversation next time we review a 996. But as far as 997s go, this one is not a Kronos. It doesn't have the Kronos, so it doesn't have the, um, uh, the sport button, um, so it doesn't the have tachometer, that. The, uh, the stopwatch. Or, yeah, and a little stopwatch on the dashboard. Uh, but generally, Arctic Silver with the silver lobster claw wheels, again, yes, they, I, I absolutely love them. Um, and I think that, uh, I mean, you know, the word period correct comes to mind, right? 2005 is one of those, is, is now a period. that is It's a bygone era, right. and that wheel will be ever forever uh, you know, thought of as that generation. I actually think that wheel looks fantastic on a 996 C4 S wide body. But that's yeah, are, are they not 19 inch? What's yeah, that? 19 inch wheel. They're 19 inch wheels. Are it's they a not? 19 inch wheel. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Usually, the, usually the non S's yeah. came with a um, uh, a 17 inch little five star thing. Uh, so this is good. So this is a great, great car, great looking car, super amazing low miles, and it looks it. Uh, but here's the catch. Um, people ask me all the time and I bet I'm sure you get this too Michael you know people are always like oh intuitively you want the lowest mile car you can get and that's absolutely the case for the air-cooled cars um, I don't necessarily subscribe to that when it comes to uh, a 996 or a 997 specifically because the M96 engine had a lot of little problems um, and these cars were under warranty uh, when when the original owners got this car, they went out and drove the car, uh, and if it was under warranty and the camshaft seal started leaking, yeah. or the rear main seal, not the intermediate shaft seal, but the actual rear main seal uh, started mm -hmm. leaking, uh, if uh, you had a second gear detent uh, where the second gear was popping out, there's a bunch of little problems that if it came up in the first 30 to 40,000 miles while the car was under warranty, it was very easy to get that taken care of. There's a problem, sure. take it in for service, they fix it for free, uh, you drive around a Boxster or a Cayenne for however long it takes them to fix the thing, and you get your car back and it's, it's better than new. Um, it is not uncommon to look at Carfaxes on 996s and 997s, these early generation 997s, and see engine rebuild. 
uh, in right. and you look at the miles and it's got thirty thousand. You know, engine rebuilt, ever engine replaced at thirty thousand miles, transmission yeah. replaced at twenty thousand miles. This very car yeah. had the transmission removed and replaced before it even had miles listed on its Carfax. Um, right. In '06. In so, '06, right. So yeah. the fact that this car has twenty thousand miles on it means that it was not broken in while it was under warranty opportunities. Yeah. Um, so this car scares the living daylights out of me. I'm not saying I wouldn't buy it, but whew, I mean, uh, yeah, this is definitely PPI material if there ever was. Sorry I went a little long yeah. on that. What do you think about that, Michael? No, I, I agree with you. Uh, it's interesting. You know, it, I think the, the common uh, conception is that uh, 996s have the scarlet letter with the IMS, but these early uh, 997s have the same drivetrain, so you, you have to take the same considerations when, when you're purchasing. It's not to say that you couldn't just um, preventively do some of these maintenance things um, to ensure some longevity, but there are no guarantees, and it's very difficult to find a warranty to cover a car um, well, that okay, holds. yeah, I mean, you, sure, you could go out and do those things, but uh, you know, camshaft seals or, or, or a rear main seal, that's an, ex that's an engine out service. The engine right. has to come out. Now, yeah. granted on a 996, and the water-cooled cars, unlike the air-cooled cars, the engines are much more easily serviced. Right. Um, they're meant to drop. They're, they're meant, meant to drop, drop. yeah. 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 Everyone yeah. says, oh, these new Porsches, they're so hard to work on, you open the rear deck lid and you can barely yeah. see the engine. Well, you're not supposed well, to. Everything's supposed to be from yeah. underneath. Um, right. You know, I mean, uh, people think that something like a starter motor or an alternator is going to be this horrible job. It's super easy. Um, but uh, but something like a rear mainsail, yeah, engine's got to come out, and that's still a pain in the butt, and that's lots of hours of service. Yeah. I Listen, I, I agree with you. Um, you know, I, I still think the, the risk-reward can be pretty tremendous on this car as far as this one has 19-inch wheels, sport seats, uh, PASM suspension, which was not common. It was very expensive. You did not see that very often on a base Carrera. And these have six-speed manual transmission, nice wheels. I mean, this is, is a lot of performance for the money. And and I would probably be, in this instance, more of a risk taker than you. I would I would chase this car. I think it's really cool, um, despite the low miles. I understand the fear fact, but I would be maybe a little more cavalier. You know, no going to this car that you're spending two thousand twenty five hundred dollars immediately for the intermediate shaft bearing upgrade, uh, if it hasn't right. been done already. Has it? Has it been done? Did you notice in the ad? Uh, I think you said that it, that it was. Oh really? Okay, so maybe. Uh, so my apologies Thought if that's say, already. Been but the I case. can't. But I. I'm. You know what? I didn't. We do no homework. We are not experts. We don't know what we're talking about. If we haven't yeah. said that enough, let's reiterate that. Uh, currently, this car is current bid at thirty thousand five hundred. Uh, Michael mm -hmm. Deeb, what is your bid? Uh, yeah, I'm saying thirty thirty seven thousand dollars. Let's go thirty six five because you could buy that car. Uh, you know, in theory, drive it home and then uh, do the intermediate bearing and you're still in under 40 grand. I, I think that's a, a tremendous value for the money. Uh, had this been an S, this is a forty-five to $50,000 car, but it's not. So yeah. there you go. I think, I think, I think all in with the IMS, you should be under 40. So that puts it at 36.5 five, final, final answer. Yep. Okay. 36.5 is your number. All right. Yeah. Um, you know, and one thing we uh, forgot to mention, this is a California car. So that really bodes well for it. If this were a Florida car, whoo, uh, but it's not, <laughs> it is a California car. So that's a good place. Uh, for it to be uh, not a lot of action on this car nine bids so far uh, only 14 comments we I have not gone through and read any of the comments um, but uh, well, after our <laughs> massive audience sees this thing uh, yeah, I don't think they'll get yeah. another bid on it so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know the, just quickly glancing at the comments uh, people are saying it has a larger revised IMS and all that kind of stuff um, a lot of, and I hate to just keep going on the stupid IMS thing and kind of sound like a broken record. Uh, larger know. IMS, dual roll, single roll, it's all bullshit. They all fail. Um, I'm not saying they all fail. I'm saying yeah. they're all prone to fail. So don't let someone right. tell you that a dual row is more reliable than a single row or yeah. the bigger one. or the, the, it's just, the, None of that. The one tip I've come to learn is that um, some of the early IMS replacements were done with a ceramic bearing. And those will also eventually fail. Not they might, they will. Even, so um, what you're looking for, metals, 
Yeah, even the upgraded ones. So yeah. our very, you know, LN Engineering is kind of the go-to to right. upgrade these. We have a very good friend in town who, frankly, I believe succumbed to exactly what I was talking about. Now he has right. a 2005 996 C4S that was a carryover year, so it was still a 996, right. same year as this car. Um, but he yeah. bought that car with like 30,000 miles on it, um, and they put an upgraded IMS bearing in it, and it and the car it, and it failed. Uh, and the Year, engine years resulted later, in an engine but it did. Yeah, but it did fail. Years later, but only like less than 10,000 miles later. Like we're talking really? a few thousand miles. Yeah. Uh, I won't name names on that car, but uh, that car, yeah, it only had a few thousand miles on the uh, IMI, really? IMS bearing. So um, yeah. it's just one of those things. But at the same time, not nearly as many of them fail as people talk about. So I am not scared to own a car like this. Right. Uh, okay, so my bid, that said, now I, I personally wouldn't pay more than like, you know, 30, 31, 32 for this car, um, personally. But I think yeah. uh, if I had to predict a bid, I think people will be stronger on it uh, because it does have the low miles. People still just respond to low miles. Uh, if somebody wants a collector version of this car and art and is not going to drive it, uh, this would be an interesting uh, option to jump in there. Um, so I'm going to say 38. I'm just going to sit wow. at 38. Yeah. Over me? Think, That's rare. You, yeah, you I, I, think it'll be, I think it'll go yeah. higher uh, but not because I think it's worth it. How's that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So, I, like all right. car, I like the way that car was uh, appointed. They, they, yeah. like, that was done for a driver yeah. on a budget. Yeah. All right. Very nice. Room for one more? Okay. Yeah, let's do one more car. So uh, the next car is a car that I personally know Bubkiss about, but this is something <laughs> that's kind of up your alley. Uh, yeah. Let's see if I can get it up on the screen here. I will yeah. do the, uh, sorry, standby. Everybody's just like going, what is going on? These guys don't know what they're doing. I thought we made that clear. Michael D., why don't you introduce this car? What are we looking at? Okay, so what we're looking at is the uh, 2019 Ferrari GTC 4 Lusso. This is Ferrari's all-wheel drive car that the bean counters have forced Ferrari to build. And uh, and it is not everyone's cup of tea. This, this execution of a shooting brake hatchback four passenger all-wheel drive ferrari uh is probably one of the most polarizing cars ever to come out of marinello and for that reason i love it because it's just you know you see people and they're just like ooh, and then you see most other people and they're like Ugh. and and I, I i love that it has such a, a you get such a kick out of it um i have spent uh, many hours behind the wheel of the predecessor to the car which was called the ff uh that had a um uh, V12 and that car uh, flat out flies. I mean, imagine. What is this car? What is, what is, what's pushing this? This car, this car uh, also, I believe, has a. See now, I, this says it has a V12, which boosts acceleration. But let's go back real quick. Um, yeah, v, so this has this also has a V12. It's upgraded. So the original V12 was uh, 650 horsepower. This is an evolution of that same motor that in this application makes 680 so it's 30 more horsepower there was a later itineration of this car that was offered with ferrari's uh engine from the uh cali t and later the portofino the uh, 3.9 liter twin turbo v8 um, which uh, makes similar horsepower in that 650 range but has way more torque because of the twin turbochargers and uh and ferrari expected to sell more of these with that uh, probably you know easier engine but i have to say if it were my money i would prefer the v12 because this engine sounds like a 90s formula one car when you drive through your favorite tunnel or in your favorite canyon and you turn the radio down or off and you put the windows down and, and open this thing up to it's almost 8,000 rpm red line there is no greater thrill in in the in the world and these cars are are a value they they're very soft in the marketplace um and and usually uh run for about 50 cents on the dollar even with ridiculously low miles so um i i am partial to these cars despite their uh, polarizing looks um so not being a ferrari expert at all i mean my my era of ferrari is definitely mid 90s you know and 80s uh this car i will say i absolutely love this thing from a style point yeah. of view everything about it is just fantastic the color yep. the, the options um, this is absolutely a Ferrari I would I would drive. I would not. I have zero interest in like a four five 
what is it, 488 or 458? Yeah, the, the, mid, the, the mid-engine eight-cylinder cars, which are track cars. This is a real GT. Yeah. But this thing, you're talking about a V12 that does 8,000 RPM. It's got nearly 700 horsepower, and it comes with either, I think it's a seven-speed dual-clutch transmission that is lightning fast, silky smooth, uh, carbon ceramic brakes, and Ferraris come with a seven-year warranty right out of the gate. That's not an ah, upgrade or anything. So you know, you're picking up a car with 1,500 miles, and you get, you're picking up the balance on a seven-year warranty. I, it just doesn't get any better than this. This car was probably in the high 300s uh, when it was original, when it was new. So my guess is this was probably somewhere in that $380,000, $385,000 range, uh, the way most Ferrari dealers um, you know, tick all the option boxes. Um, so, you know, we're looking at a car that's got a day left, 1,500 uh, miles on it, a six-year warranty at least, uh, five and a half, six-year warranty, and it's at $185,000. I mean, this is just an unbelievable value. Uh, a, a used 458 is $180,000, uh, you know, a seven-year-old car. This is a year-old car. So how would, you know, if with a warranty like that on a Ferrari, how, what's it like getting your Ferrari serviced? Is it, you know, oh, uh, I know this sounds silly, but uh, I know people that have Fiat's and Alfa yeah. Romeo's brand new ones or, you know, current yeah. modern ones. And because it's part of that whole Chrysler world, you know, you wind up having to go to a Chrysler dealership and deal yeah. with that level of service. And, right. you know, you give them the, your car, you have to fight a service writer to get them to agree uh, to actually repair the car based on whatever, um, yeah. and it's just it's just a nightmare. Um, your your Ferrari dealer is working with multimillionaires all day long. The level yeah. of expectation is through the roof, and I can say, having been with arguably one of the best franchises in the country um, uh, through the Boardwalk Auto Group, uh, Ferrari service is usually pretty awesome. Um, you know, it can be frustrating for a person who has high expectations to have a problem with his you know investment grade automobile uh that that can be tough to manage emotions but as far as like getting a car to your dealer um having them take care of everything and take care of you in the process with a loaner car transportation um some people like to have their car um transported to uh, the dealer instead of being driven um, to me the the biggest thing for the average person in this country is do they live close enough to their local Ferrari dealer? You know, if you're in the Midwest, your Ferrari dealer um, might be at the other end of your favorite state, and that that in of itself could be, you know, uh, yeah. How many of our McLaren friends here in Las Vegas have to ship right. their car down to Phoenix? That does not sound right. fun. All right. right. So uh, with 12 bids, a day to uh, less than a day to go till this car right. uh, gets uh, either sold or bid. Um, I don't, I'm sure there's a reserve on this car. I don't know if it's met it or not. Um, yeah. It's currently got 12 bids, and the high bid right now is $185,000. Michael bid. Michael D, what's your bid? I, I'd say 230000 for that car. Okay. Um, I, that just should get it. That, that, now, the reserve might be higher. Who knows? The, the owner might want all of his money back, but he's not going to get it. I, I think the value at that car is at two thirty. If you start going two fifty and higher, then why wouldn't you just get a brand new one? Yeah. Um, but... Uh, but anyway, I don't know. It, is you know this a lot of the car? Is this a car? Hard, is this a hard car to find brand new? Can you walk into a yeah, Ferrari yeah. dealership and is there one? Yeah. So you know, most Ferrari dealerships uh, play kind of a shell game with regards to new cars, but um, there are likely in this economy. Let's just say it safely that way. Uh, there are likely new uh, GTC for Lusos on the ground that could be acquired. Um, these car, this, this model might eventually get phased out. Uh, V12s are probably going to get phased out at some point by Ferrari, which is hard to imagine a Ferrari dealership not selling a V12 uh, car. Um, but oftentimes, these cars were used as leverage cars to get the more popular um, models that Ferrari usually has multi-year waiting lists for. Um, so you buy one of these, gain some favor from your local dealer, and then he find your way to onto and maybe near the top of the list for the car you really are after. But what winds up happening is you get behind the wheel of this thing, and uh, instead of putting 1,200 miles on it, you put 6,000 because the damn thing is so fun to drive. It, they yeah, really I are. Mean, they at, are a great driving experience. This car, compared to like a brand new Panamera, um, oh. you know, a full, yeah, it, what a fully pan, option turbo. Yeah, a Panamera, listen, is an amazing machine. The, the shifting, the steering, the engine is incredible. But the Panamera doesn't, it, it's, and I, 
and I'm, we're a Porsche guy, right? Like the, yeah. it's, it's a soulless car. And this car is just a symphony of emotion. It is unbelievable to drive this car and listen to the shriek of the motor at 8,000 RPM. And there's no Panamera in the world that, that does that, so. All right, so I think I'm gonna, if I had to guess, and really it is a guess for me, the only, the only, the only kind of uh, intellect I'm gonna put into this thing, <laughs> for lack of a better way to put it, um, to, to add to my guess, is that I would, given what I've seen on cars and bids, really high dollar cars, it doesn't seem like they have a lot of really high dollar uh, bidders here. I mean, yeah. they have sold a couple of cars, I think for more than 300, um, but it's pretty darn rare. I would be betting that the people that are looking at this car on cars and bids uh, are probably other dealers that want to grab this and, and have this in their inventory. Uh, so I'm gonna be soft bad, on it yes. and say uh, 200. Um, yeah. You know, but the, again, that's a that's a total guess. Absolutely, don't listen to me on this one. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but uh, neat, I would sure like it. Yeah, yeah. It'd be interesting absolutely. if this thing, if this car brings 240, e even if the reserve isn't there. It'd be interesting to see if that's what the, the valuation is. Again, this is only a year old car with with very low miles, yeah. um, and a lot of the FFs get driven just because you get behind the wheel of it, and then you want to get in that car every day. And yeah. you can't daily drive this car. That's what's so amazing is you're talking like extraordinary performance and this, you go get groceries and coffee in this car, piece of cake. It's very, very timid, very easy to drive. But if you stay in a gear long enough, all the hell breaks and it's fun. Very nice. Well, I think, so those are the three cars that we're gonna talk about today. I think uh, that yeah. pretty much covers it. Uh, so happy bidding to everybody that's gonna go out on cars and bids, bring a trailer, uh, Good eBay, luck. eBay. Uh, if you're watching this and you're going, okay, these chuckleheads are morons, but I wouldn't mind listening to what they have to say about some car that you see on an auction that's coming up, please put it in the comments and uh, tell us, and we'll go check it out, and maybe we'll talk about it here on the next episode of Bid Nerds. Uh, we are nerds and we're bidders, so we're morons. Um, yeah. That's said uh michael deeb anything you want to say before we close it out i bid you adieu there it is look at that guy <laughs> and please make sure you check out our other channels derfasa nation and porsche road trip tv available uh, uh soon coming to chassis network on pluto tv um there it is uh we're, we'll have sponsors to talk about at some point too we have a bunch of that yeah. we could have talked about today but you know whatever they just pay for the thing uh, oh also check out the rami show uh that's another one of our channels uh boy thursday night there's gonna be a heck of a live show at nine o'clock so check that out and i guess my dog says it's time down thanks for yeah. watching another edition of 